Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Another month has gone by and that means it's time for another monthly favorites. September is the start of many orchestras opening seasons. As part of this, I was gigging a lot. So much so that I started calling September Gigtember. As part of all of my gigging on top of my full-time teaching schedule, I needed some moments of inspiration. And as I was filtering through some of the pictures that are on Instagram, I found two that really spoke to me this month. The first of these was a tipped over coffee cup and the remnants of the coffee had been made into a beautiful painting of a bassoon. The second of these was a picture of German street art of a gentleman who is playing bassoon and out of his bassoon there are butterflies emerging. I posted the picture of the bassoonist with the butterflies coming out of the bell of his instrument and many of my Facebook friends left comments that they didn't know that Abe Lincoln had played bassoon or that it was four score and seven reads ago. This helped brighten my day and give me some of that extra energy to make it through some of those long days in gig timber. This month, there have been several articles that I absolutely fell in love with. The first of these was by Stephen Walsh of The Guardian. He noted that a piece that had formerly been lost by Igor Stravinsky has been found at the St. Petersburg Conservatoire. This piece was originally written for Stravinsky's former teacher, Rimsky-Korsakov, after he passed away. Now, as a bassoonist, I am excited because Stravinsky is known for writing some of the most challenging bassoon parts. And although I have yet to actually see the literature to get my eyes on if it's a challenge or not, I'm interested to see if this piece is going to be another excerpt for bassoonists. The second article that I fell in love with was by someone near and dear to me, my brother. I've hinted on my channel that my family are musicians, but when one of my family members that is a musician writes an article that pertains to not just bassoonists, but any musician that is traveling, I think it's important to bring it to everyone's attention. My brother is principal trombone with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And at the end of the Boston Symphony Orchestra's European tour, he was trying to board a flight with his trombone and they would not allow it. The article goes into the detail of the challenges that he tried to overcome in working with British Airways and also what the rights of a musician are with federal regulations. Now some of those federal regulations do not pertain when traveling abroad, but they are important documents to make sure that you have with you anytime you're traveling with your instrument. I say this because the Strad this month also ran two articles about double basses being absolutely destroyed beyond repair. And that in my family alone, we have had over four instruments in the hardest cases that were available, that were checked, that were destroyed. So if you are traveling, always try to keep your instrument with you and be sure that you are traveling with a hard case. The third article, which is not actually a bassoon article either, but I think is important to this channel, was that they have figured out that giraffes that were seemingly mute in the past actually make humming noises. Now, for me, this is so exciting because yeah. I love a good giraffe. And to find out that they are musical and that what we had thought when they weren't musical was their necks were too long so that they could not actually make any noise. I never quite believed that. But now that we have this sound technology to hear that they are not only making noise, but they are musical, I am so excited. My favorite product of the month was the Body Shop's Shea Butter. You might be wondering why I'm mentioning a body product on my channel, but as I have been taking so many of the professional gigs, I cannot wear lipstick because it will get all over the reeds, and I also cannot wear perfume because many musicians are allergic to it, and as you're underneath the stage spotlights, the heat coming down on the body amplifies any body odors. So perfume can take on epic proportions. For this reason, there are rules and regulations against wearing perfume and also scented body lotions. My skin is naturally dry, but the Shea Body Butter is basically unscented and one of the deepest moisturizers I have ever found. 
I buy this from The Body Shop, and when I buy it, I always buy it on discount of like buy three, get three, and I stock up because as we're going to be moving into the winter months, things are gonna get colder and my skin does get dry. <laughs> My favorite feeling this month has been restoration. Restoration and putting my body back together after all of the travel and teaching load. Nothing has restored me more than coming back to Mother Nature. It seems like every time I had a moment that I didn't know if I was going to have the energy to make it through another exhausting day, Mother Nature gave me a gift. One day she gave me a beautiful butterfly that just happened to flutter into my path. Another day, she left me a nest that had been emptied out by little birds. It made me feel like it's okay to go fly away and to do all of these adventures. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this monthly favorites. I will link all of the product and article information in the description box down below. So do be sure to take a second and check those things out. And if you wanna keep up with me in the month of October, there's always Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, I am getting better, and all of those are available to you. If you wanna make sure you don't miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you liked this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I will see you guys next time, bye. Okay, so let's dig into Donzy Kane. Donzy Kane is what I like to call, when it's good, it's real good. But when it's not, you just gotta let that go. Look at that, I can frame him with my wave. He still is in our retention. Ha <laughs> ha!